So they say these campaigns here are really tough on your family, not if you bring your family with you whenever you can. And uh, Emily, I'm so proud to have you introduce me. You did the same thing for me when I announced at the old state house a while ago. I'm shameless when it comes to my family. I had my wife Annie there at the convention. Uh, Joe Lieberman had Mayor Fabrizi give his seconding talk, and I had Annie Lamont. I think we did okay. I think we did okay. And Governor Weicker, you never have to ask, can we hear you? You have spoken boldly and clearly and honestly for over a generation. This country is much better off for your proud service, and I'm going to do my best to speak as clearly as you have over the last four years. I can't bear the thought of any ursine humor, so I'll skip it. <laughs> Let me just tell you a little bit about my family. It's Father's Day, so indulge me if I could. But I just tell you that my mom was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Her dad had gotten shot up in World War I, decided to go down to Puerto Rico, recuperate, help start up a small business. You know, while I was there, he heard a ship was coming in loaded with Catholic teachers who were going to be working in the local schools. So he put on a Sunday finest, put on a bow tie, showed up at the old San Juan uh, dock, and uh, met the woman that became my grandmother. My mom was born and raised there. She uh, went to school in uh, San Juan, and then when there was uh, noises about Nazi submarines in the Caribbean, they sent her up and she uh, lived uh, with her aunt for the next uh, four years in uh, the States. You know, my dad, on the other hand, he was a city boy. He grew up in um, Manhattan. His dad was a proper banker type, and his uncle was a rowdy socialist. And like Emily said, they used to have some pretty good, raucous discussions around a dinner table about what type of a country we are, what type of a, uh, where we want to be, and what we want to do. And at the end of that uh, dinner, they'd shake hands and go forward together because they were family. So there's a lot of um, anxiousness out there amongst the party brass about the idea of having a democratic primary. But I just think it's an old-fashioned kitchen table debate within the democratic family about what we stand for as a party, what type of a country do we want, and how do we get there. You know, more family, my house, you know, Annie and I, we have a household full of teenagers. I've spent most of my life in education. The house is an education for me. I started up a business from scratch. We've been building telecommunication systems for college campuses for uh, 20 years. Wired up a couple hundred campuses, been working with faculty, administrators, and how telecom can help to the education process. I've done some teaching in my day, teaching down at uh, the Bridgeport High Schools. I teach a course called How to Start Your Own Business. And I just was thinking when I was teaching the class there, we were telling these kids that if you work hard, and you play by the rules, and you make good choices, opportunity is going to come your way. And if you work at it, and you grab a hold of that opportunity, and run as far and as hard as your legs and your heart will take you, good things are going to happen. But then I look, and I just see a government that's not making good choices right now. And as I travel around the state, there are a lot of folks who think that our best days are behind us, that our kids aren't going to have the same opportunities they had. And that's why I'm in this race. We need somebody to challenge the Bush administration, challenge them where they think they're wrong. And if Joe Lieberman won't do it, I will. There were three people that inspired me in different ways to get into this race. One was a villain, one was a victim, and one was a hero. No, I haven't just seen the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> the villain, is there anybody here from Alaska? The villain to me was Congressman Don Young. Congressman Don Young was the author of the omnibus transportation bill. Hundreds of billions of dollars that included the infamous bridge to nowhere, a bridge to a deserted island in Alaska. Also included in that bill was 6,341 earmarks. An earmark is a special piece of pork written by a lobbyist, submitted at the last moment with no congressional scrutiny at all. It's all legal, but it's wrong. To me, it's the big easy for career politicians in Washington, D.C. And if, those, if you're not shouting from the rafters that this is wrong, then you're complicit and you're part of the problem. Now, do you realize, do you realize that there are 63 lobbyists, 63 lobbyists for every congressman in Washington, D.C. right now. 
I think it's the best government money can buy. <laughs> Senator Lieberman spends an awful lot of time talking about reaching common ground with President Bush. I think it's high time for the Democrats to stand up and start talking about the common good. Woo!